In the presence of God is actually about this awe-inspiring reverence for who God is, the weight of His glory. You need to know that God is everywhere, but then you can experience His tangible presence and feel the reverence of His presence, which is the awe of His presence, like you are in amazement of how great, of how big He is. And that is something you can cultivate. Just like God would do some miracle in your life or to someone close to you and they share a testimony and you can feel the awe of God. Wow, 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 God is great. Wow, God, hi. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video. And if it is your first time watching, I am grateful to have you watch today's video. If you've not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about something that I always have been running through my head like it's a thought. What is the evidence of the presence of God? For the longest time growing up, I used to feel like when I have goosebumps that, oh wow, I've experienced the presence of God. So it was mainly based on feelings and until this point and my growth in the Lord that I realized that the presence of God is beyond a feeling. Really, it's beyond an excited an excitement feeling, proof or the evidence of God's presence in my life. Which means if it's about goosebumps, if I'm at my home and I'm not feeling all those things, it means I don't have the presence of God with me. So the God that is omnipresence and I can't feel him tangibly, it means I don't even know if he's here. I might end up having to be fearful and all of that. Now, the first point I want to let you know that I've come to realize, which I'm sharing, is that the evidence of the presence of God is reverence. Reverence. It brings this reverence with it. Now, if you check through the scripture, you realize that every time God appeared to people, whether through an angel or whatever means God would appear to people, even in Luke gospel, as God appeared to Zachariah, the first response is fear. And that is actually reverence. But then as a human, it is a fear like with the thought line of them feeling like, if I see God, I'm going to die. So like I've seen the Lord face to face, like a scripture said, oh, maybe I'm going to die. So is this fear of like, I am too unholy. Like I'm a sinner. I don't deserve to stand before you, right? So it is, oh, it has been fear. And one thing I want to like dissect here is the fact that fear can give you goosebumps. <laughs> like that one will actually be a ghost bombs. Just like reverence and awe would give you goosebumps. And good music can also give you goosebumps because there's some music that can put you in this awe. You know, you just feel like you're in awe, in amazement, and makes you feel those goosebumps in your body. But then the presence of God is actually about this awe-inspiring reverence for who God is, the weight of his glory. Just like in the tabernacle of the old, whereby when the presence of God comes, there was this reverence about it, this purity about it. They, though then it was about it that there was a cloud coming down and covering the place and the people could feel the reverence, the weight of God. They could feel like this atmosphere is different. And in a tangible atmosphere of the presence of God, it is beyond goose bombs. You may not really experience this in your home, but you can create that atmosphere and experience it because First of all, you need to know that God is everywhere. But then you can experience his tangible presence and feel the reverence of his presence, which is the awe of his presence. Like you are in amazement of how great, of how big he is. And that is something you can cultivate to actually be more aware of his presence. Like the song says, let us become more aware of your presence, Lord. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Just like God would do some miracle in your life or to someone close to you and they share a testimony and you can feel the awe of God. Wow. 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 God is great. Wow. God. Like. So you can actually experience the awe of God and that is an evidence of God's presence being felt by you as a human being. Now, these other things that I realize that are evidence of God's presence that we've not really paid attention to is the joy. The joy of the Lord 
is an evidence of the presence of God. Now, the joy of the Lord is beyond what you feel as a human being. It's beyond a feeling. It is a presence. You just feel joyful and you don't know why because it is a joy that actually passes your understanding. It surpasses your understanding. You can't fully understand. Things are not going well. Definitely, things are not perfect. Things, because things will never be perfect, really. Let's talk about that. Everything is not okay. But then you just feel this joy that makes you feel like everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. Like you're not in a place of dread and anxiety and almost like shock that things are going to go worse. But you have this deep joy that gives you calm. Now, that is the joy of the Lord. That is the evidence of the presence of God in your life. So if you've ever experienced that, go for more of that and know that with this, God is with you. God is with you. As scripture says in Psalms, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You will fill me with joy in your presence. That is why joy is an evidence of the presence of God. The other thing that is the evidence of God's presence is, is peace. The Bible says righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Now, the peace of God is not a peace like quiet and calm, like, you know, serene environment. Serene environment is good if you are going for relaxation and all of that. But the, the peace of God is the kind of peace that was portrayed when Jesus was sleeping in the boat in the midst of the storm. That things are happening in life. It doesn't mean that you are becoming careless or callous. You don't care. But it means you just have peace that you know, in my own power as a human being, there are some things that I can do. I can't change the situation of Nigeria as a country, as a Nigerian that I am. I can't transform things in the country. But if I start thinking about it, it might put me in a state of anxiety, shock, depression, fear, and all sort of things. But then I can en enjoy, let me use that word, or experience the peace of God that passes human understanding that while things are not going well, God is providing for me and I have peace. Because the peace of God is not just a thing that is abstract. It, it means welfare. In the Greek, it means helpies. Then in Hebrew, it means shalom. And it's, it's so rich. It means welfare, prosperity, security. It means when God secures you and protects you, that is his peace. That is the evidence of his presence with you. As God is providing for you and being benevolent towards you, loading you with benefits every day, you wake up every day and you're being favored or presidented. Girl, boy, man, woman, this is the evidence that God is with you. The fact that you are being provided for, the fact that you woke up today breathing, that is the evidence of the presence of God. God is with me. Every day I wake up, I need to remind myself that God is with me. For me to breathe, for me to have a smile on my face in the midst of the way the world is and things are not going well and the corruption in the world and the mindsets and the mental issues that people are having and the thoughts that people are bringing up and the innovations in evil that people are bringing up and God is giving me peace. God is protecting me. God is preserving me. I have the presence of God. This is a real evidence of the presence of God. And these are things that I've not heard it said this way. And when God ministered it to my heart, I said, wow, there are so much, all the virtues that you find in the word of God, they are evidence. Once you see them in your life, they are evidence of the presence of God in your life. When you talk about the fruit of the spirit of God, all the fruit of the spirit of God, talk about love. When you know that, there's this love. First of all, as a believer, you know that God loves you and you feel the love of God tangibly. That is the evidence of his presence with you. And then you can now translate that love <laughs> and give out because it means that you have enough love even to share, that you are loving on people, you are being compassionate to people. And if you are a real believer, if you've been giving people, God has given the gifts to be generous. When you are generous to people and show people this love, you feel this joy within you. You feel this peace within you. You feel this excitement within you. That is the presence of God. 
it is experienced through the love you share. Mm. This should make us see the presence of God differently from the aspect of the abstract of just feeling like the presence of God is this goosebumps where people close their eyes and start, you know, singing and soaking and all of that. We can experience the presence of God without the drama. We can experience the presence of God without having to have the, the ambience, the sounds. We can experience the presence of God by just understanding that the peace of God, the, the joy from God, the love of God and the love that flows through us, which is still the love of God that flows through us, is the evidence that God is with us, that we are experiencing his presence in our lives. And the last one I would mention, but not the least, and not like I've exhausted the least because it is inexhaustible. The evidence of his presence is freedom. When you are living a life of freedom, whereby you know that you're not living under manipulation, you're not living under the control through human religion, through, you know, the ideas and ideologies of men and all of those things, and you are living under real freedom. That is the presence of God. That is a real evidence of the presence of God. It is beyond goosebumps. It is beyond feelings. It is just a state that, of course, when you are living in freedom, the feeling, woo, like they say, free like a bird, but you are not actually free like a bird, but you are free in the bounds of the will of God. Like you're not doing this thing out of pressure. You're not saving God out of the thought like, if I don't save him now, he might hit my head with a sledgehammer like Triple H. <laughs> or if I don't serve God now, something bad might happen to me. Or if I don't obey God now, something evil. No, you just feel this joy that every command of God is a protection for you. It is not God trying to tell you I'm limiting you, but it's God telling you I am protecting you. I am helping you. I am loving you. It is a symbol of my love when I say stay away from this or that. So when you experience freedom and you are not in bondage to anything, to anyone, to any religion, because religion can put you in bondage as a Christian. If you are treating Christianity as a religion, following dogmas, you might be put in bondage to try and buy blessings from God <laughs> as if to buy prayer. You know, pay these amounts and then God will do this for you. Or do that for God to do this. Or do the thing for God to do that. And all of those ideas, you will be in bondage to people. And then they will start bringing fears into your heart. And the scripture says that God did not give you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. They will bring discouragement to you and even make you look like, oh, you're, 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 you're on the wrong when you're not grounded. But once you are grounded on your freedom, you understand what the scripture says in 2 Corinthians, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Not where the spirit of the Lord is, there is control. There is manipulation. There is, you know, narcissism or whatever. There is bondage. There is a yoke. Mm -mm. It's where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You are free. That's why Jesus said, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And who is the truth? Jesus is the truth, which he literally said, and you will know me when you are ready and you're willing to know me. I will make you free. That is the evidence of the presence of God. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this video ministers to you and it helps you understand God on a deeper level. You can do a deeper study on these and share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It's going to help YouTube algorithm to share it to other people for them to recommend it for other people to watch also and share the video. Don't forget to share. Subscribe also. Thank you. God bless you. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.